Yeah. So that led into, you know, and I, I try to explain to George my art perspective and, and my direction. And, and uh, they're not supposed to be the same. And... All right, well, I, folks, I can't allow you to sit through any more of this crazy barn rambling. Uh, the day I shot this about three weeks ago, it was still about 110 degrees in Texas. And uh, as much as I wanted to just uh, get to the point, I, I never could. And, and I wound up rambling about two years of pent-up disappointment and, and anguish. And uh, that wasn't what I wanted to say. I really just wanted to talk about these paintings. And so I want to get on to the next picture. And it kind of combined it. It was a combination of multiple stories for over the cross-section of time that these three characters spin out in Redford. And it really begins with grocery shopping in Mexico, tequila, and some woman named Ruby. See, George and I used to go for these walks out in the desert. We'd go over to Mexico and do some grocery shopping, and we'd come back and take these walks out in the desert and discuss ideas and directions for art and sort of clear the air. And usually I would wind up listening to him talk about how in love he was with this girl, Ruby, who was a San Francisco firecracker that had come to join our efforts in Redford. George, ha George had it real bad for her, and he would tell about how he knew psychologically that they were the perfect match. And he even went so far as to erect a monument in her honor in Marathon up on Texas Highway 90. Some kind of chicken coop love cha chapel he had hoped would impress her and win her love over. Well, generally it was hard for me to get a word of productive art talk in edgewise. So on this particular explain, trip into the desert, like I hid one of Mexico's own cheap bottles of vertigo for George to find. An example of art hunt treasure he would get by participation. What I didn't know was just exactly how depressed and heartsick he was for this girl. And he immediately began slamming the cheap vertigo. And that's when everything went downhill. I had to break it to George that Ruby had been after me and she wanted me for a boyfriend and was pursuing me. But I continued by reestablishing our pact as brothers, bros before hoes. But it was too much rejection, too close for him to bear, and he stumbled off with the vertigo into a place of unmarked graves in the desert and began pissing on them and cussing God. <laughs> Well, of course, my rejecting Ruby on behalf of my friend led her to go completely psycho, and she began manipulations to further divide our collaborative efforts in the desert. So, in the painting, I combined all of this to tell this story. I used a bit of symbolism. Ruby became this sort of demon succubus Medusa, dividing the picture in half. She's carried up by demons, her hands have six fingers, which represents Chinese royalty and America's addiction to cheap-ass foreign goods, greedy American elite capitalists. Then, of course, there's George, head full of demons. You know, I knew George back a few years ago before he wore a cowboy hat, when he walked around for two years with a broken pair of glasses. Here, drunk and depressed, pissing on the dead, unleashing a horde of evil spirits. And then there was me, declaring my direction, standing my ground, bearing still a message that no one would listen to, even though the entire narrative is taking place in a West Texas valley of death. Ah, at this point, I remember thinking, God help us all. And just for the record, to be truthful, there'll never be another brisket girl greater than Ruby, Chicken George. <laughs>